This has been, uh, I'm not going to say a long time coming. This has been in the works for a, a while, but I, I needed to wait for the right time. And right now, it really is the beginning of the right time um, for quite a few reasons. Um, I want to spend the next several weeks here on Wednesday evenings and a bulk of our Sunday mornings. We're going to be walking through some criteria or material that I've assembled together for the purpose of helping anybody that calls Fairfield Christian Center your home church. The truth is, is we all need to know exactly what it is we as a home church believe and stand for. And we've had intentions for a while to implement a website so that people can uh, plug into the website if they're curious uh, and find out what we are about, who we are, where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going. Uh, now, because of our r rigorous schedules, because of the way things continue to unfold, we've put that into the hands of several people over the last several years. And our website has just never come together. Well, I ha I've had a conviction on my heart for a while that this, is ha this has to happen. We, we have to have someplace people can connect to when they hear about our church or even church members who are part of what we're doing, but perhaps maybe there's questions you have about the church that you're afraid to ask. There just needs to be a resource center that you can go to that'll give you the exact idea of what it is that we believe, what we stand for, who we are. Can I get an amen? And so we're going to do that over the next few weeks. I'm going to implement a portion of what our website's going to look like as I'm building the website myself uh, over a period of a few days, maybe weeks. And as we cover a portion of this material, uh, it'll then be uploaded up onto the website, eventually arriving at our destination of uh, what it is that we believe. Now, our, our website will consist of the normal things that we want out there, where we're located, contact information, upcoming events, former events, great events that we've had great fun in, pictures, some videos. Uh, you know, uh, there's going to be a link that will have a connection to all of our past sermon series. All that is going to be the obvious stuff that will be on the website like is on every church website. The things that I'm concerned with that we're going to spend the next several weeks covering is going to be in the About Us section. In the About Us section, anybody that will have any idea or question about what we are, who we are, what we believe, where we stand, they can go to that section and we'll have it clearly mapped out what it is we believe, our tenets of faith, so to speak, uh, our scripture references on why we believe that. And from that, from that point forward, we can build out. That way, we all clearly understand who it is that we are, what we do truly believe, and it'll be all biblically backed up. Can I get an amen? amen. And so we're going to work through that. Um, in the About Us section, it's going to be broken down into a minimum of three subsections. Okay, one subsection is going to be the what we believe uh, deal, and I'm going to call that our convictions. And it's going to cover topics like the Bible, because we believe in the Bible. Can I get an amen? <laughs> this is important today. Go to several, go to church websites and just dig around. You, believe, you wouldn't believe what some of the churches that call themselves churches out there actually promote. But I'm not ashamed of believing in the Bible. We're going to cover some of that tonight. I believe in the Trinity. Come on now. I believe within the Trinity there is God the Father. I believe in His Son Jesus. And I believe in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm not ashamed of any of them. Can I get an amen? amen? I believe in the work of salvation. That's important for today. I believe in the church. And absolutely, I believe in the Great Commission. Those are the main essentials, and then we'll have a subcategory of uh, secondary issues, or not issues, but secondary uh, 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 side essentials that are important, but they're just not so important that we're going to divide over. Um, but that'll be in the conviction section or the actual what we believe in. We, over the next several weeks, we are going to work through every one of those points. 
thoroughly so that we can show you why we believe what it is we believe. And perhaps if you don't already know it yourself or believe it yourself, maybe your, your faith will be strengthened and you'll, you'll feel better about where you're connected to. Can I get an amen? It'll be more than just you liking me a lot. <laughs> amen. The second uh, uh, section of the About Us is, is going to be, uh, what are we building? This is what I'm going to call our culture. You're already pretty familiar with this. Our culture is the environment in which we're trying to create, and I'm using the five Ps to do that. We will walk through those on a pretty thorough uh, 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 work because I believe that we should have a passion for what we do. There should be a preparation in what we do. There should be a, a punctuality in who we are. We call ourselves believers and Christians. We need to be the trendsetters out there. The Christian should not be the last person to the job site. The Christian should not be the one causing the problems. The Christians should be the ones that are leading the pack. Can I get an amen? Okay, we, I believe in, this, is, this, this, this sounds elementary, but you have to trust me. When we're in ministry and we're handling one another and dealing with one another and we're dealing with issues, it is paramount. It is vital for us to remember to be polite to one another. Amen. Come on now. Because there's a tendency sometimes to not be polite. And that's exactly where the enemy wants us. And so it's part of our culture that we're trying to build. In all things, we can find a way to communicate the truth of God politely. Amen. Wow, all of a sudden it got quiet. <laughs> Then the, the fifth one, it's, these are the five P's that are important for the culture that, that, that we need, is to be present. And I don't mean, hey, we just need you in church. We need you in church. But when you do come to church, come to church. I, I put this one in there for me, first and foremost, because there are times I'm in the room and I'm not in the room. My body's there, but my mind is somewhere else, and people are talking to me, but my mind is on something that's going on on the phone, or the business, or the family, or, or, and I'm just not present. So I might as well not even be there physically. So if we're going to be there, be there in the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen? You know, I'm convicted and convinced that take the idea of building a church and building a ministry and honoring God completely out of the picture for a minute, if you, anybody, were just to apply those five Ps personally and practically in anything that you do, you'll find success. So these aren't, uh, you got to believe in Jesus thing to make them work. These will work in any situation that you apply yourself to. And we'll work through that. But I call that the culture. So we've got our convictions that we're going to talk about. We've got our culture that we're going to re-promote. And then I want to talk, uh, of course, about the course that, that I believe we all find ourselves on. This is the benefit of this journey. Now, I've been convicted for a, a long time that if somebody were, were to ask me, hey, what, what is your ministry about? What, what can I expect to, to experience when I'm in your church? And we have this idea long before we ever became the pastors of Fairfield Christian Center. This has always been our heart for ministry. I kind of sum it up in, in three letters. I, I believe every step is we believe, we belong, and then we become. It starts with faith, a faith in Christ. And once we have this faith in Christ, we begin this journey in Christ. Now I realize that many people are on a pre-journey before they start the journey with Christ because they're searching for something. And you may be on a journey right now looking for truth or looking for what it is that you want to put your time and effort into. And you may find yourself in a church or our church. But at a certain point, if you're around the word long enough, you're going to arrive at a point of faith in Christ. And so your journey then really begins. A faith in Christ. You believe. Then you belong. Once, you, once you've got a real faith, then you realize that we belong to something that's bigger than us. This isn't just a church for religious purposes. We're a family that's striving and growing together. There are days when we're experiencing great moments. There are days when we want to gouge each other's eyes out because families sometimes fight. Come on. But we belong to something. It's, it's why my heart gets broken when people come for a little while, build relationships, and allow the enemy to cause them to break fellowship over stuff that we should not break fellowship over. I think that we should have lifelong relationship with people in the body of Christ. Amen? Because we belong to something that God wants us to belong to. Well, if, you, if you're allowing faith to work in you and you belong to this, there will be a time in your life that you become what it is God has called you to be. 
And that's why I call this the course that we're on. We can sum up what we're trying to accomplish in everybody's life through believe, belong, become. And we will break that down as time moves forward. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. Now, I, I want to set this up tonight because I, I, I want to I preface this whole thing with an idea to each one of us that I believe that there's, there's some hills that we should be willing to die on and there's some hills that we, we probably shouldn't be so willing to die on. Okay, now that, that has to be left up to you, your relationship with the Holy Spirit and what He's leading your convictions to. I personally believe that these are not just convictions that I would have. I think these, are the, these things I'm going to mention uh, are, are good hills to die on, okay? And I want to talk about our foundation first. Um, foundation is important for each one of us. Uh, I'm driving down the road not too long ago, and I I'm, I'm, had to stop in some traffic, and I'm watching them pour this foundation for some kind of a structure. And I, I don't know, for the first time, I just started calculating in my mind all the working pieces that had to have gone into what we would look at and say, that's just a simple piece of concrete. That's just a slab of concrete that, of which we would call a foundation. But let's just, just look at all the pieces that actually have to go into any foundation that is going to be built with the purpose of supporting some kind of a structure. You've got to first cal calculate the cost of what that foundation is going to, 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 to bring because that foundation is not going to be cheap. It's, it's going to cost something. And so the foundation that we've been given in Christ, there are, there are great, well-intended believers who, who want the absolute best for their life, their family, their ministries, their community, their schools, but they're struggling because they haven't realized that they're, they're probably missing a few pieces of their foundation. And so therefore, any old doctrine that comes along, they'll buy into different ideas of doctrine and they'll get confused and frustrated and some will give up and quit because they didn't realize that they're actually missing pieces to a foundation that I believe God wants us all to have. And if, if they're anything like me, pride always leads. And it's something we're always fighting. And there have been times in my growth that I, I'm in a room full of people that I probably didn't understand what I needed to, but I was too afraid, I was too proud to raise my hand and ask a question that I, I kind of felt like, well, I should know the answer to this, so therefore I'm not even going to ask it. Do I have any friends in the room? And, and so I want to remove that. The best way to remove that is I don't want anybody feeling exposed because there may be some things in our basic Christian doctrine that we may not 100% understand. L let me give an example. And I'm not throwing stones. I will not mention names because it doesn't matter. There, there are times in my life that I've had to grow too. Can I get? I need some amens from you guys tonight. I'm, you can't leave me hanging like this. Okay? Not too long ago, I saw a post from a, a, of a, an individual on Facebook who had been connecting to our church for a good while. And this person was trying to encourage others. You, you, you need to get in there and pay your tithes. T-I-D-E-S. And I thought, oh, that's a typo. And it wasn't. They, they actually thought that we were using the word tide and not tithes. And I'm thinking, oh, well, I don't want to embarrass this person, but they're, they're, they probably don't even understand the real concept of a tithe because they, they think the word is tied and it's not. And that's just, that's just one piece. Now, I'm trying to be very respectful. I know Brother James wouldn't say stuff like this, but we usually have when people lose family members, we all hear stuff that's not biblical. We hear things like, well, they got their wings today. Uh, um, that, uh, they're an angel now. No, even when, when Brother Jason Rice passed away, I heard stories. I was driving down the road and a butterfly landed on my car and I was like, hello, Jason. No, I'm not, so, I, look, God bless them. They're just... 
They're just trying, but they, they're missing pieces because so much of this is unbiblical. You know, uh, literally, we, we, we need to know what the Word of God says so that we don't get led astray. And the only way to do that is to say, hey, we need to have a foundation that we, we go to quite a bit to remind people, hey, this is our basic Christian foundation on what we believe and why we believe it, and perhaps there may be some better balance and health that comes out of it. Can I get an amen? Because we do live in a day of deception. And it's so easy to lead people astray because we can make any story sound good. No, we need a grounding in the word. We need a foundation. But the foundation can cost. It did cost, by the way. Uh, it cost God. It cost Jesus something significant. But a foundation not just has cost to it. There has to be a design in the foundation. They don't, they don't just mix a bunch of stuff, throw it out there and go, whatever that thing looks like, we'll build on top of it. No, there's got to be a design in it. If they know they're going to build a structure that is so high, so wide, so heavy, then that means that foundation has to be so thick, so wide. There's got to be a design involved with the cost. There's got to be materials for every foundation given. Am I helping anybody tonight? Okay, in the materials, when, it, when you just look at the common concrete slab in South Texas, or, or in the South, being Texas, you get a combination of limestone and clay. There's usually some kind of an aggregate, being some kind of a sand or a gravel that's mixed in with that. You've got to have some kind of a silica, which would be a sand. There's got to be some kind of a mixture of water within that. There's usually rebar that is the real strength of the foundation, where the concrete, would, it, when it's in its dried state, will hold the weight, but the rebar holds the concrete together. All of this is part of the foundation. There's form boards that, that they put in place to, when they've designed it and, and poured this with the materials, it, it goes in the shape that the designer had in mind. This is all part of the foundation, all the work and effort and toil and resources that go into something that we just overlook. And maybe we're missing some of these. Maybe we've got a great idea and we believe in Jesus, but maybe we're missing some rebar in our foundation. And that's why we, keep, we continue to cave under the pressure of life because we, we don't realize that we need our structure strengthened to where once it's in place, it should never go away. Can I get an amen? This is a great illustration, y'all. Then there's chemistry. Amen. There's chemistry. They don't just throw it together. And go, there's chemistry. This it takes a certain percentage of a certain percentage of a certain percentage. Hey, are y'all with me? Then there's this thing called time. Amen. Anybody ever pour a small concrete slab somewhere? Come back a few minutes later to find some cat walk through it. Uh huh. Because, hey, come on now, or some kid. Yeah, Troy was here. Well, when I find Troy, ah, why? It, it not, on top of all the other things, it, it takes time. It takes time. We, we cannot rush what God may be trying to do to build our foundation. Amen. Then, of course, the most important. You can't just throw concrete in the air and expect it to work. You gotta have some real estate somewhere. You gotta have some space for it. Amen. Us, our hearts, us. We are that real estate that he's trying to build this in. And we've gotta be willing to give him that room. If, if we're so busy with everything else, there's no time, room, or space for what he wants to do in our lives, amen? That's why we're going to take the time as a church for many, many, many reasons. I have a friend, a dear friend, who he and his wife are thinking about joining our congregation. And, and they're really searching. They're putting, putting the work to it. And he called me and he said, I went to the website that you have advertised on your, your Facebook page. And it took me to a Mormon page. And I thought, what? I got on there because I know we haven't been able to do anything with it, but because we've sat dormant on it. Yeah, another ministry tried to take control of it, so I had to go back and get it back and, and, and reestablish it because it was taking them right to a Mormon church, okay? And you can't, I can't tell you how mad that made me, but in the name of Jesus, it spurred me to say, now's the time for us to do this. We're going to take the time necessary to implement a foundation so that everybody clearly understands. And I fully, fully, 
fully understand that there may be some people along the way. I can't know. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't know why, but there may be some people along the way that will hear something about the foundation of this church and say, oh, nope, that's not for me. Well, at least you know now. Amen. Who's still with me? I don't believe that'll happen, but it's possible that somebody can say, nope, I don't believe that. We've had it happen in the past. Uh, one of the churches we planted up in Little Elm, we invited some dear neighbors of ours to join it, and they were so excited because they wanted to learn the Bible. And about four months into it, when he heard me say, there's a man in heaven that's representing you and I right now, he could not buy that idea. He refused to buy that idea, and they quit the church. And he told me, he said, there is no man in heaven, period. Well, I'm sorry, you, you cannot be a believer in Jesus Christ and write out that he became a man, died as a man, was literally ascended to the Father as a man. There's a man in heaven that represents you and I. Can I get an amen? The man, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So it's important. It's important to, to have this foundation in place. So first things first. Are y'all still with me tonight? It, any quick, quick question before we push forward in this? I'm bringing the heat. You better get I don't see you ready to write down anything. I'm bringing the heat, brother. I'm going to give you a quiz. Okay. All right. Here we go. Hey, I, I like this brother right here. All right. Let's talk about a hill to die on, a hill that's worth dying on. There are a lot of people that's waging a lot of wars and willing to die on a lot of stuff that's just not important. And they'll sacrifice relationships and friendships and connections because they're standing for something that just doesn't matter. I believe these matter. These, these are part of my conviction, but I don't think it's because I have some insight that other people don't have. I think these are common sense things that are worth standing for okay and if we can't stand for these then maybe that's the beginning point for some but the, the 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 first hill that i'm going to talk about that's worth dying on is the hill of authenticity authenticity now listen to this authenticity literally means the quality of being authentic authentic means of undisputed origin or another word genuine what I want and what I'm looking for, what I want to be a part of, I want it to be 100% genuine. I don't want anything fabricated. I don't want a fabricated gospel. I don't want a fabricated movement. I don't want a fabricated presence. I want a fabricated nothing. I want genuine article from the origin. I want it to come from God and God alone because he's the only one that understands me. He's the only one that can fix me. He's the only one that can talk to me in ways that nobody else can. So I want the original article. Can I get an amen? amen. I believe authenticity is a hill worth dying on. We should be pursuing everything that we do, and we want it to be authentic from the creator, from the originator. This is the foundation of what we believe. I don't believe in a half-hearted God. My Jesus wasn't fabricated. My Jesus didn't pretend. He wasn't a figurative figure within the scripture. Uh, he, we're talking about the genuine article. He was there in the beginning when everything was spoken and built. Everything was built by him, through him, for him. He died for us. He literally took upon himself our sin. He literally died. He was literally resurrected from the dead. And he literally ascended to the right hand of the Father because he was there from the beginning. Can I get an amen? He is the original article, period. He's genuine. Amen. That's a, diff that's a big difference opposed to a lot of the denominations and doctrines that are out there. They have a very ingenuine, impersonal deity that they uh, adhere to or, or, or honor. And they are not the origin. They are not genuine. They're fake and false, and I don't want anything to do with them. I want what's authentic. Can I get an amen? Now, there's three areas that I believe that we sh should, should pursue authenticity. And this is a hill worth dying on. You could call them three hills. I want the authentic scriptures and nothing else. Amen. 
When I read that Bible, that Bible to me is not some fabricated book that some man came up with. It is the authentic Word of God. Amen. And I'm going to prove it to you. I want an authentic faith. I don't want some half faith. I don't want some half-hearted hope. I'm pursuing an authentic faith. Amen. This is good stuff to be in. And I want an authentic presence of God in my life. Not some fabricated wave that we can jump on because we know how to make the goosebumps flow. I want uh, the presence of God and I want it in an authentic fashion where if God so chooses, God does. Can I get an amen? amen. Are you guys here? If God so chooses, God so does, whether we like it or not. Amen. That's why we don't, get, we don't get frustrated when we know it's God and it's God. Let it be God because you're not going to stop it anyhow. Amen. That's an authenticated presence of God. But tonight we're going to start with the authenticated scriptures. This is a hill worth dying on. Are you all ready? Yes. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Brother Roy. Yeah, I like, I'm going to show you something, man. It's like, it's been there this whole time. And for whatever reason, we just keep skipping over it. That is an amazing question. That is part of the question. I'm convinced. Now, I read a book uh, not terribly long ago. It was called The Christian Manifesto. And in that book, the argument was presented, the debate was presented that in generations past, it was a little easier for those generations to adhere to the Word of God because they were raised to be taught. They were taught as they were raised. Let me say it that way. That the Word of God is the final authority. The Bible says it. They believe that that ended the discussion. Who agrees with that? Yeah. I do, 100%. Unfortunately, we do live in a generation today where that's not been taught. Though we believe the Bible to be the final form of authority, you, you march out there to these... Uh, universities, you go out there into the workforce and tell them, well, the Bible said it and that's it. The, the, your truth is not their truth because of what they've been taught. So the Christian Manifesto presents this idea that it maybe instead of you demanding that they believe, it, what, believe what it is you believe, instead of you trying to tell them the Bible's true, why don't you show them the Bible's truth through your life? Okay? You live the Bible in front of them where they'll ask the question, what, what is it about you that's different? Let me show you. So in a sense, it presents this idea that we kind of go in the back door now. We're not trying to tell them the Bible's true. We need to live the Bible in front of them so that they see a marked difference in us and a marked difference from what's going on in the world. And when asked, our answer is the Bible, God. Right. If you want it in a Greek translation, you wrote my God and in the Kibbutz Kingdom. Now you say you translate it. Yeah. You go and give it to them in the full in the full Greek translation and allow them to say, Well, if you want to take your time and translate it. Yes. Because I guarantee it's gonna match up at least enough for you're gonna be changed by whatever you translate it. I'm convinced you spend enough time around the word, the word gets in you and changes your life. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm, I'm, and I'm not, I don't call myself crazy as in the wrong. I'm just crazy enough to believe that. You mess around with the Word, time in the Word, and the Word will change your life. So time, exposure, prayer. But this scripture, man, I'm telling you, it's like God is saying, why don't you let me do the bulk of that work? And that's something that we haven't done because we keep trying to do things ourselves, but there's a component in this that has to be released to the Holy Spirit to do His work. If yes. I may add one more thing, we, we're privileged to live in a time where prophecy is coming true right in front of our very eyes. We're, we are the end times people. We can literally open the prophecy and see it happening in front of our eyes. We can go name one after another. Even right now, we have three prophecies coming true right in front of our eyes. If you don't believe the Bible, well, let me tell you, it was the best psychic I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, that's all good. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Yeah. What am I doing? What, oh, oh, he wants me. Yeah. I, 
this has a, a point to it. Man, anybody gets out of line and I'm going to hurl this at you. I don't know that this is going to work for me. I'm going to stab myself with it. Listen to this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Are y'all ready? We're going to walk through this. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to be upon us in the room over the next few moments. May some of this revelation become their revelation. May our lives change radically because we open ourselves to a truth that has been there this whole time. And may this equip us in ways we did not know it could take place in Jesus name. 316. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All, we're, we're talking about a hill to die on. Authentic, uh, the authenticity, the authenticity or the authentication of His Word, okay? His Scripture, the Word of God. It's not just a book. We should not put it to the side. We should not find another way around it. If they don't want to receive the truth, then let's get it in us and live it before them until they do see it. Can I get an amen? Because all scripture. Now, when Paul wrote this in the the year A.D. 65, there's no doubt whatsoever that he was predominantly talking about the scripture that he had in his possession, which was not Matthew, Mark, Luke and John was not the book of Acts was not Paul's 13 books. It was not the book of James or, 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 or Jude. It was not Peter's writings. They didn't have that yet. So he's predominantly referring to, first and foremost, the scripture of the Old Covenant, being the Pentateuch, the five first books of the Bible, and then the law and the prophets. They considered that scripture. However, for you and I, all scripture also includes the Gospels and the epistles that were written by the, the uh, uh, ordained men of God that he called and allow, allowed the Holy Spirit to speak through. So for you and I, we have even more to work with than what they had to work with because we had their revelation to pull off of also. But all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Can I get an amen on this? This is important. This is a hill worth dying for. This is a hill we're dying on. Let me say it that way. Okay. All scripture. That word all means all. It didn't mean just a portion of it. Didn't mean he gets to cherry pick what he wanted. He didn't want. He said all scripture. So get used to it. That means Genesis to Malachi. That means Matthew to Revelation. Every bit of it is for what we're about to map out. Can I get an amen? Nobody. No pastor, no ministry leader, nobody has the authority to disconnect any portion of the Bible from the rest of the Bible and say we don't need it today. Amen. All Scripture. So the hill that we die on literally means if it's in the Word of God, it's for the body of Christ to at least understand, if not to adhere to. All Scripture is given for these things. Amen. And I'm thankful for the whole Bible today. Now, all scriptures given by inspiration of God. Why? Because it's authentic. The word is authentic. Now, I know we have translations today that are trying to rob the truth from the original, but I'm here to tell you, though there can be some perversion in those, I still think God is so awesome that his message can get through that because mankind is not going to thwart the word of God or the message of Jesus Christ. Amen. They've been trying for generations and they're not going to do it. God's going to get his message out there. Amen. Why? It's authentic. I still think we should be careful with the translations. I think that we need to get used to the King James Version and find a version that is really closely related to the King James Version for easier reading. Okay? New King James Version is a good one. ESV is a good one. You can trust those two translations along with the King James Version Bible. We have to move past 
the weak and cheap argument or excuse that's been used for generations. It's an attack from the enemy that says, well, I don't like the King James because it's got all the these and thous and thus is in there. That's nothing more than an excuse to not know the truth. Amen. Amen. We, ha we, we have resources today. You can take the King James Bible and open it up on a computer and find what every word means if you want to. Amen. So we don't have an excuse it's authentic, and we need to treat it as such. Can I get an amen? All right. And it's profitable. This, this is powerful. Not, not only is it inspired authentically by God, but it's profitable. For you and I, that word really means it's advantageous. The Bible is not something that should be used to beat people down with. The Bible is supposed to be advantageous to the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. It should not be a tool used to hurt. It's a tool used to build up. But sometimes to build up the right way, we've got to walk through some things that are not so fun. Amen. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I'm facing a, a surgery. I've got to have it. I, I mean, I can't go around it. It just has to happen. But if I want a quality life, I've just got to let the procedure take place. Amen. Nobody signs up to go. I need it. I need it up. Today, I like a hernia surgery today. Sounds like fun to me. No, are you kidding me? Not fun, but I have to do it. Amen. Are y'all with me tonight? All right. See, brother, I almost popped that thing in. It. It's not going to work. All right. So all scripture is given by God, who is the author of this. And it's, it's an advantageous thing for us. It's helpful and it's serviceable. That's what it means. Okay, and here's the four things, four main things that the Word of God is an advantage to you and I. We do need perspective to see it this way, though. This is a hill worth dying on, okay? Um, it's advantageous because it's profitable because it teaches us doctrine. That's what he said. All scripture has been given by God and it's profitable for <laughs> doctrine. Well, what we need today is sound, proper doctrine. Amen. We, if there's ever been a need for a solid, grounded, proper doctrine, today is the day for a solid, grounded doctrine. We need to know what we know. We need to know why we believe. And we need to be founded and grounded in His Word so that we can't be led astray by anything that just sounds good. Because there's a lot of imagery and trickery out there that sounds good. It feels good. It feels like the right thing to do. But it will lead us into a terrible situation if we allow it. And there's just too many ministries out there today that are, they're growing in droves because they're making people feel good. And I don't blame the people as much as I blame the ministries that are, it's almost like they're being used by the enemy to lead people astray from the truth. And so we pray, Lord, wake them up. Amen? Wake them up. But we have to know good doctrine. That word doctrine is the word instruction, it's the word learning, it's the word teaching. Instruction, learning, and teaching. So here's the truth. I, I, I just want to do a fun little survey tonight. Uh, who in this room has been saved for 40 years? 40 years, 4-0. Okay, who's been saved for 45 years? All right, we, we, who's been saved for 50 years? You've been saved for 50 years? Praise God. Who's been saved for 55 years? Right here? Okay, let me just cut to the chase. How long have you been saved, Miss Shirley? I'm not, it's not a setup question, I promise you. I've been saved since I was nine years old. Yes, ma'am. So, 12 years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm full. Let's just say it, it's 60 years. Yeah. Okay? 60 years. Let's say 60 years is the longest in here. And there's a lot Miss Shirley could teach the body of Christ in 60 years. But there's no way possible that in 60 years, Miss Shirley, being as smart as she is, can know everything about the Bible. Amen. I've, I've had people tell me, I left your church because there's nothing you can teach me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you do with that? Okay. 
Maybe I need to step aside and you teach us. I don't know. Because I think that no matter who we are or what we've learned or what revelation we have, there's always room for something new. We all have to be a perpetual student before God because the Holy Spirit is living. And will never come to There's always something that the Holy Spirit No, can I get an amen? Amen. And when I get a revelation, I'm, I'm not trying to, to be derogatory to anybody who's ever had any addictions, okay? Because I understand addiction. But uh, it's almost like an addiction to me whenever I find a revelation and I'm on that high from that revelation. And I'm like, wow, I've never seen that before. It's the coolest thing, almost the coolest thing in my life. Amen? Amen. Are y'all still with me? All right, it's profitable for doctrine. Okay, it's profitable for reproof. Ooh, ooh, I've got family members that used to beat me over the head with this one because they use this word as if they're trying to fix something in me. That's not what this word means. That's not what this word means. Let me show you what this word means. For reproof, it means proof. <laughs> it means a conviction. It means evidence what the word of god is inspired by god and one of the things it's profitable to you and i as is in and of itself is evidence brother avery that the word is real the bible will interpret itself if we give it enough time amen proof in that brother john go to hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 this is the word evidence Hebrews 11, 1. I have the, I have the one where we can have the concordance with it. Yeah, just, just bring, it, bring up the scripture and, and we're good if the Holy Spirit leads. I, I mean, I could read this to you, but I just want you to see this. Right? This is a hill worth dying on. We're talking about the authenticity of the inspired word of God. That Bible that you carry with you, that Bible is the most powerful source that you're going to have to put your hands on. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. Now, faith is. Oh, now I want you to remember this part for the end of today's message. Now, faith is. Okay. I know we're about to say faith is the, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence. Same word of reproof. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith. Faith. How does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The authenticated Word of God brings faith, okay? The evidence is in the, the Word. We don't have to be creative with it. If we would just allow the Word of God to work through us and work the Word of God in our lives, God will show Himself and prove Himself to be faithful and real and just. All we need is a little time and get out of the way trying to creatively Convince people that they need to follow God. Why don't we let the work of God work in our life? Because the word of God will become evidence of the things that we're hoping in our own lives. Amen. Faith is, by the way, that, that, the way that's worded, this is a present tense idea. When he said, faith is now, now, right now, right now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, now, right now. What do you mean? The moment you're willing to apply the word, faith becomes the force in our life. Faith is right now. Can I get an amen? amen. Faith is right now. It is the substance of things hoped for. Okay, the substance. It's the evidence that we need of the things that we have not seen. Okay, let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Reproof means to convince it's proof. It's evidence. The Word of God is inspired by God, and the Word of God is its own evidence that it's authenticated. Are y'all with me tonight? No? All right. Not only is it an advantageous thing for us by way of doctrine and by way of evidence, here you go. It's an it's advantage to us, whether we like it or not, for correction. Mm -hmm. 
this is where we usually lose people. I'm all in right there, but when you start talking about that correction thing, I don't want nothing to do with that. <laughs> Name me anybody that really does. I don't. I don't ever like being told what needs to change. I, man, I promise you, Dr. Berger and I were about ready to fight in the room the other day when he started telling me everything I didn't want to hear about me. Because <laughs> he got the little chart out. <coughs> he said... Troy, you were here at such and such date, and number one, there was a whole lot less of you in that date than there is today. <laughs> Why? Because I've, I've allowed some, some LBs to show up. <laughs> Christmas was really, really rough on me. I tried to blame it on the holidays. I, I've had to loosen the belt a little bit, and he didn't like it. He, part of your problem, Troy, is, is you're not at the weight you're supposed to be. I mean, he's just telling me the truth. Uh, he, <laughs> he, he's just telling me the truth. I didn't want to hear it. I'm thinking, I, oh, so I'm paying you to insult me. Okay, let's go another one. No, he, I'm paying him to tell me the truth. I'm, I'm paying him to level with me. Then he, then he got off and, and he said, we're going to take some blood. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I hate needles. I didn't like that one little bit. And then after, after the blood, he came in and said, ooh, your cholesterol is not where it needs to be. Your A1C is dangerously close to being diabetic. He said, you, you can fix this. this is, he said, you, you, this is you. This is your fault. This is what he told me. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> no, it's the truth. I, I left there going, hmm, that's not what I wanted to hear, but it's what I needed to hear so that I can be a better me tomorrow again. Amen? The Word of God is it's an advantage to us even in the moments when the Word of God puts us on that, that table and says, let me, let me fix you. Here, here's what, what, what's about you that I don't like, but let me tell you how this is done. Are y'all with me tonight? Here's what this word means. Actually, I do want you to bring this Greek word up, okay, for correction. Look, look, look I've got, I'm going to do this to, to one or two words tonight. I'm going to try this thing. Okay, where, where are we at? Okay, look at this, look at this Greek word, okay? Now, brother, can you, can you scroll down? I, uh, can you break, break that word down? Uh, look right here. This is from a compound. This is what I want you to see. This word that means correction for us, Okay, here's what, it, here's what correction really means. To straighten up again. Now, I want to show you something. Okay, it means to straighten up again. It, it, it means to, 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 to bring a rectification or a restoration to an upright or right state. Okay, there's even a hint that says to restore you to what you used to be. Here's part of the definition. An improvement of life or character. This is what the Word of God does. Now, we're going to work. I want to break this word down here in just a second. Look, growing up, I wasn't a terrible kid. I really wasn't. I, I, I tried size on for a couple times, and Dad showed me real quick what I didn't have. Okay? And, and we, we, we had in our house what, what, we, what we got punished with, and it was a boat oar. A big wooden boat oar. And I was always confused because we never had a boat. But, <laughs> and I, I promise you, it, it, w when discipline time came, and it took quite a bit for Dad to move into that, that direction. But, but the way I think he looked at it is, if you're going to make me do this, then it's going to be worth my while in it. Because Daddy would grab you with one arm, and you'd go around what we call the circle of death. As he's, as he's lifting you up off the ground with that boat oar, and you're trying to run away from him, and all you've got is a circle you're going in. And it, it almost seemed like the, the, the more you turn, the tighter his grip got. Man, and there were a handful of times that I, I was in that circle and, and, and hated it in the moment. But can I be honest with you? No, I hated it, hated that moment. There was always something after that moment that made me feel secure. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but it's almost like I knew he cared enough about me. I never, not one time did I ever feel like dad was taking his anger out on me. 
I know some situations and people have experienced that. But discipline in a godly environment, you don't feel beat down. You feel like, ooh, I messed up. But wow, I'm actually kind of thankful that he loves me enough to fix this. Yeah, my pastor who, who has <laughs> went to glory a couple years ago, this was the one area that I, I kind of desired a little more from him in. But Pastor John just hardly ever told me, I mean, a few times he did, but he hardly ever told me what needed to be fixed. He was always just trying to build me up, and I loved it. But the, I'm going to be honest with you. There was a few times that I, I needed him to step in and tell me, what you're doing is wrong, Troy. I need you to fix it. And it would have, it would have been a little better for me. Am I helping anybody tonight? Don't be afraid of the correction. Don't run from the discipline. When the Word of God starts working on our heart, man, stay the course because God isn't doing this to hurt us. He, he loves us. And it's to our advantage that we allow this to work. Now, let's look at this word because this is powerful how this happens. This comes from the Greek word of Greek 1909. Now, open that, that up. That's the word epi. Okay? Epi means to come upon. Anytime you're, you're talking about a, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is always described in at least three ways. Epi, in, and para. Epi literally means to come upon. Okay, now let's look at the, the other word. Jump back out of that, brother, if you can. Look at this word right here. To come upon. Can you scoot down there? And to, no, no, you, you bring, it, bring it back down. Right here. To restore to straightness or erectness, which means to be upright again. This is powerful. The Word of God corrects us in a fashion where God Himself, through the power of the Holy Spirit, moves in our direction to build us back up, set us, get us off of the ground that we're on, in the mess that we're in, and put us on a path that we need to be on. And sometimes there's a dusting, sometimes there's a scourging from the Word. There's no other way to put it. I, I how to demonstrate it other than there are times when I feel like the Holy Spirit in a very kind fashion pulls my britches down and paddles me. Or come on now. Because stupid stinking thinking had me going one way and the Holy Spirit was saying, no, no. And you feel yourself being corrected as he's straightening you. Do I have any friends in the room tonight? You know how much would change in our nation if we could get back to proper discipline, period? I don't mean just disciplining children, period. You know how many adults need a spanking today? It is amazing to me. The majority of our problems are because people just aren't disciplined. I mean, there's a, I thought that Genesis 8.22 tells me there is repercussions for my actions. Seed time and harvest. You do something stupid, you're going to get something stupid. Amen. That's my version of Genesis 8.22. Amen. All right. Am I helping anybody? Listen, listen, listen. Okay, go back to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. This, this, uh, the authenticity of his word is a hill worth dying on. Amen. Okay, now, number four. It's profitable for you and I for instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness. Our works do not make us righteous. Or that would say instruction to righteousness. But when we're here, we need to learn what we have. Learn because there's a right way we should live, a right way we should act, a right way we should think. There's nothing about the gospel that says he saved you to leave you in a sinful condition. No, he brought us out of that unto good works. And we can never let that standard be lowered. As a matter of fact, we need to push that standard back up and say, in the name of Jesus, we should all raise that bar and live as holy as we can. It's righteousness that we're trying to uphold. Can I get an Amen. It means a tutorage, instruction in this. It means an education. We need an education in righteousness. We need training in righteousness. We need a reminder of what it is to be righteous before God in this nation today. We can't go out there and tell the world we need to get it in the church first. We need it in the pulpit. We need the pastors to live righteously one more time before God. If we would live righteously, our marriages wouldn't dis dis disintegrate. Our relationships wouldn't crumble. Our kids wouldn't be running rampant. We would have the things that God wants us to have in our life because we're living righteously. Amen. Amen. It also means nurturing. 
a training and a nurturing in righteousness. Then let's look at verse 17. These four things, it's, it's profitable. The authentic word of God is given by God for training in doctrine and reproof and correction and, and, and instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, listen to this. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, I just want to show you one more word. I'm excited about this word. I love, I, I've never seen this before. When I saw this today, I jumped out of my chair, hit my knees on the bottom of the desk, had to ask for forgiveness. Listen to this. That the man of God may be complete. That word complete in the Greek is the word artios. And here's what it means. Perfect, fitted, completely. It's only used one time in scripture, right here. This is it. And here's what it literally means. By implication, it means fresh. What? Brother, pull up 737. Yeah, touch that one right there. I want you to see this. This is verse 17. 2 Timothy 3.17. Now, touch... Okay, can you back up one more? Can you just jump back to that real quick? I just want to point this out. Okay, so, so when we're looking at this word, our word for for complete, okay, or per perfect. Um, this word comes from, the root of this word is right here. Now touch that word. Okay, now can you scroll down to where we can see the definition? Oh, no, come on, come on, down, down, down. Right there. This is powerful to me. Can you, can you see that right there? Can everybody see what's written there? No. Okay, let me read it to you. This is what, the, what it means when it says fresh, okay? To be complete, to be perfect. It means at the present moment. Oh, wait a minute. Is there not scripture that talks about the mercies of God are anew and fresh every morning? Is there not an idea that when we're in the Holy Spirit, Paul encouraged us, fight the daily fight of faith. He meant that on a daily basis. We daily fight. There's something about being renewed day by day. Our bodies are actually getting older, but in all reality, our spirit should be getting younger and stronger. Amen. Why? Because the Word of God, not only does it bring the doctrine and the reproof and the correction and the instruction into righteousness, but the, the Word of God makes us fresh every day. Amen. This is exciting to me because we live in a world that's beating us down. Why do y'all want to go to church all the time? I need, I need a fresh perspective. I need a renewing. I need a strength. I need to be in the presence of God. I need to be in His Word. His Word helps me every day. This is authentic. This isn't fabricated. This is authentic. Who, who could stand every morning to wake up in the authenticated presence of God every day where he's saying, I've got something fresh for you today, something powerful for you today, more energy for you today. Come on, church. This is what God wants us to do. That's why I think this is a hill worth giving everything on the authenticated word of God, the scripture of God. Can I get an amen? Amen, amen, amen. Next week, we're going to talk about genuine faith that comes from genuine word questions comments or concerns before we jump out in prayer nope okay let's go <laughs> i'm kidding no. let's pray have i helped anybody tonight i'm i'm so looking forward to the next several weeks to establish our foundation to know clearly where we're at where we've come from where we're going so that, so that we know that we're going to be used by God. Father, it's in the name of your Son that I thank you for wisdom and revelation. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your Son. I thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for your Word. I thank you that it is the truth that never changes. I thank you, Father, that your Word still guides. It's still powerful. It's still that two-edged sword that you are using on earth today. And I thank you, Father, that we have not given up in this, that the Holy Spirit is guiding us in this truth. I pray for a fresh renewing on a daily basis from your word. 
go with us when we leave tonight. Prepare a path for each one of us. Bring us into a divine connection with somebody to minister the love of Jesus to. Bring us back Sunday morning with a, a spirit of expectation, Father, that the Lord, you, Father, through the Holy Spirit, are going to touch lives, radically change people, deliver us from bondages, and set us afire, Father, for today, this moment. I pray this in Jesus' name, and the church said amen. amen. God bless each and every one of you. I love you. <laughs>